Okay, Monday morning in the kingdom, and it's Monday the 13th, okay? You guys thought Friday the 13th was bad? Well, Monday sucks. Monday the 13th, that means it's going to be a bad day. It's going to be terrible. Probably the ex-wife will send a lawyer letter or she'll call or something like that. You never knew, okay? I don't look forward to Monday the 13th. Friday the 13th is okay because everybody believes it's a bad day so they don't push their buttons or or do stuff, right? And plus it's Friday, they just take off early because it's Friday, right? But Monday the 13th, no, you're expected to be at the office or at the shop. The boss is an asshole. He makes us come in on Monday the 13th. Oh well. Okay, let's check the temperatures. Okay, minus 15 Celsius at seven o'clock this morning, okay? But it feels like minus 18, all right? Okay. And then the F scale, five degrees. Yes, five. But feels like zero. Okay. All right. I don't know how that comes about, but we'll, we're learning. Yeah, we're learning. All right. Okay. And also, too, the weather network is a heavy snowfall warning for us. So that means it's warm. It's going to snow. Okay. And then it'll turn cold, and then we'll have to get everything started to go plow, all right? But that's a fact of life. Okay, the flag exercise is happy there, okay? And of course, my iPod things just pop something up on the screen there, covering half the screen. It's probably some thing to buy or something. You know, there's so much crap and control on this stuff. Can't you just leave the iPod alone, it's used as a camera, not to go on the internet and look at boobies, eh? I have one computer for that. It's my booby computer, okay? But now this thing's covering half the screen. I don't even know what's going on. I can see myself. I can see my lips move. Oh, God, I sound like the ex-wife. Okay. But yesterday, Ed Martin's wife sent up some nice stuff, okay? Now I got my funny gloves on, standing out of the wind. Oh and try to hold this slippery beer can. Can you guys read that? It's brewed in, in Ireland, okay? That's that country over there. And on, in March there, we celebrate that little leprechaun guy or something, that's St. Patty's Day. Oh, am I getting confused? I think I'm getting it right, you know? But this thing here has a ball inside it, eh? Okay, so that means it's a quality product. Look at the can, look at the writing, right? Okay. So that means it's uh, quality. So we're not going to chug along this at 3 in the morning before we go to bed. We're going to open it up and pour it into a glass and let it breathe, right? But I don't have glasses, so I'll put it in a cheese whiz jar, okay? And then I'll drink it from that, all right? But this looks like a very nice product, eh? You know? But she also, Ed Martin's wife, did send up beer in bottles, okay? So that was nice after working hard yesterday, sitting in the house there, drinking a beer out of a bottle. Brought back memories of when I was breastfed, you know, going from the breast to the bottle, not from the breast to the can, okay? So there's a great importance, okay? Yeah, okay. But it is windy or a slight breeze for you southern folks or for us a calm day up here or a windy day up here is a calm day for southern folk because that wind just blows. So I'm hiding beside Thor, the plow truck here, right? See, there's Thor. Okay, can you see it? I can't see anything. Like half the screen is covered with this stupid ad. I don't know, it's somewhere there. Oh, look, there's Thor. Okay, all right. So basically I'm looking at the bottom. That's just like when I turn on the computer to CBC, Ma CBC Canada or CBC Manitoba. It's all covered with ads, okay? So that's the Communist Broadcasting Corporation controlling what I see. So I got all these ads. I want to see the news. And then the news is all one-sided. They're telling this story after story after story. Like, it's just unreal. So that's why I don't watch the news or read the news or anything. I just enjoy my life. Okay, I see the world through Facebook. I scroll it quickly, like, uh, just to skim read it, okay? And the same is on YouTube with the comments. I like it when people put their location so that they're commenting, say it's a nice day, and they say, hey, here we are in Tennessee. That's good, because I'm learning, they're learning, okay? Oh, this sucks. Maybe I'll move the camera up there. I can see my face now. 
All right. I have no idea what that ad says. I don't have my glasses on. But also, too, Sir Rodney hopefully sent the right windshield wipers for the book burb. All right. How freaking simple or how hard is it to keep windshield wipers all the same? So like one off a of 57 Chevy fits on the 2013 book burp. No, they changed out the windshield wiper arms. They made them little flat things on the end and we're trying to figure it out. So you, I, we use Rock Auto as a source of reference because they have nice pictures. You can zoom in, see the measurements, all that kind of stuff. Rock Auto wasn't even showing any big flat wiper arms and stuff like that. So hopefully Ro Rodney, Sir Rodney sent us some nice windshield wipers. I have never owned a vehicle in my life that the windshield wipers stick to the windshield all the time. It's unreal. And it's just, I just shake my head, they're stuck again. So I want an extra set of windshield wipers in case they break or whatever. You know, I could be on a road trip, you know, somewhere going and it's snowing and raining and everything. And then all of a sudden the windshield wiper falls off or something, that's not good. Right? So that's why we always have to be prepared because up here you just don't pull into a gas station and buy a windshield wiper. We have to order everything in. Okay? That's the joys of living at the end of the world. We pay a lot of money on freight. We pay a lot of money to live up here for food. Our taxes are outrageous. Our water bill is outrageous. And then like that Explore Net or whatever Explore, they sound, oh, cough. <coughs> okay, everybody have a drink. I'll have a Guinness later. Okay, but the thing is, it's making us pay for high-speed internet that's not high-speed. Like, you just shake your head. But that's the thing is, is we, we'll keep, we don't do anything. We don't uprise against these people and say, hey, your service sucks. We're revolting, right? You know, and then go to, the, go to their office with pitchforks and, and stuff like that, you know, like they did in the medieval times and drag the people out and hang them, right? We can't do that anymore. You know, we sit there, we're, as you say, we're passive. And we sit there, oh, the internet's too slow. I'll pay my bill. I'll increase the speed. I'll give them more and more money to get better speed. Well, it doesn't work. It's like climate change, you fools. The more money you pay, the dumber you are. And that's what we are. We're paying high prices for gas and diesel. For what? So these corporations can show huge fourth quarter profits and all that crap? Yeah, we're the stupid ones. And then you guys got to realize that. I realized that a long time ago. So I moved to the end of the world. So I don't have to deal with people, you know? I look at my phone before I answer it. You know, that's pretty bad, eh? Anyway, it doesn't ring anymore. I just give up on that phone. But I like the emails. I like the comments on YouTube and stuff like that. We're getting close to 7,000 subscribers and we're getting 2,000 views a day on a video. That is good. That is a good ratio. And the interactions, like 100 comments on a view or a posting and stuff, that is good. That's because the people are following along, right? And stuff like that. If I had 45,000 subscribers and 200 views on a video, something's wrong. It's like a presidential vote count or something. You know, there's that's wrong. I like my, my subscribers low and the views steady. That means it's one-on-one, -on -one, right? So if I went to a book signing, you know, and I... I gave away or signed 200 books, but only 200 people showed up or 201, one person didn't want the book because I offended their mother or something. That's okay. That's what you want. You want low numbers and steady. Okay, enough of the rant, I better go. This iPod's really pissing me off. Now I'm down at the bottom of the screen. The ad's gotten bigger. Oh, they're just controlling me. They're controlling me. All right, I'm out of here. Okay, I'm in the house and I got my Lily Tomlin mic on. Okay, I went into the loader shed where the dogs are. There's one dog there, and that's the loader. And then there's the thermometer, okay? I walked in that loader shed and it was hot. It, the heat hit me like I stepped off the plane in Florida, okay? That's like, was it plus 30 degrees, which is like 80, 85 degrees Fahrenheit. So the thermostat in the loader shed is electric and it malfunctioned, which is normal because it was a new one five years ago and all of them of that batch have malfunctioned and cooked everything I've owned, okay? So I caught it in time, so it's, you know, that's why we have to check on everything every day, all the buildings with electric heat. Also too, the iPod here was putting a thing reminding me it's the long weekend coming up. Yes, in Canada we have a long weekend, so it was getting bigger and bigger to tell me that the long weekend was coming. Okay, I hit record button, so why are you popping this crap up to ruin my video? Okay, now I'll go have some of my coffee.
Okay, that was only a 20 minute job to change out the thermostat because we have these other oddball ones in stock. The way I wired in the loader shed, I diff used a different pro system or whatever for the wires, so it's only a two wire thermo instead of a four wire thermo, okay? So I had one of these old two wire thermos here, so I installed it and I made a note that it'll malfunction and heat up everything. So you kind of go, wow, oh, sure, th the building got nice and hot, but that's a lot of load draw on the wires and everything because the heaters are running full bore out so that's why we use big wires and make sure we have good circuit breakers in the system all right so that job is done i can put this stuff back in the storage shed and continue on with the lin number two okay coffee time in the kingdom and it's snowing nice it's supposed to get heavier snow so i'll have to pull the fuse on the book burb there for number nine to get some traction to get out of the kingdom because i don't want to get stuck on the flat surface again Okay, with it snowing out there, that's why you always have scrap steel or recycled steel or material under your workbench. So you grab the pieces like this and drill a hole in it so you don't have to go out to the steel shed to find in the snow, okay? No sense going out and getting snow and everything like that. Icky. So you never throw anything away at the end of the world because these pieces here are reusable. So these pieces will come over here. Ooh. Oh, there we go. So that will be welded onto the alternator bracket here because these little bolts here are not going to give it that much strength. So anchoring it here like this, that will hold it straight and everything like that. And this is the air compressor mounting bracket uh, when the, uh, the V12 was in a, well, a truck, a semi truck or whatever, that cab over truck because you need air for the trailer and the truck. So this is actually going rather well and seems how we only have three of these three hole uh, gaskets. I was only able to put three of the manifolds on so that everything is going good. So Rodney is trying to find out where the fourth one went so I can put this manifold on. But that's okay. It's a Monday the 13th so he's probably having a bad day like me. All right let's go have some coffee. Okay to use the welder the gas powered welder seems how the exhaust is vented out or yeah vented out the chimney there. See it right there. I had to let the wood stove die out, so it got a little chilly in the shop, but I was able to weld the alternator bracket here, okay? So it's easier to use the gas power welder than it is to move the MIG or the other buzz box, you know, drag it over here. So the welder's right here, so we just string the cables out. I welded it in position, so that way I know it's going to fit the three holes or four holes, and then I flipped it over to do some more serious welds. Now we'll buff it up and call it good. Okay, the alternator is mounted. I sprayed a little paint on it and it looks good. So it's nice and firm. I didn't, uh, well, this bracket came off of the international truck. It kind of jimmy rigged right in here. Like I explained to the viewers, we're not spending money on this. We're not fixing up the fuel lines to be steel lines and everything like that. Anything we're putting on this motor can come off and go on another motor. Because if this thing blows up, it's gone. Some collector in the United States of America We'll be looking through a 702 V12 to fix or need parts. This thing is gone. You know, just like an ex-wife. Don't st let it stick around and hang around and spend money on it. That would be like uh, fixing this thing or spending money on this thing. That would be like getting a boob job for your ex-wife. What's the point? It's just a waste of money. So anything we're doing on this thing can come off and go on to another motor, okay? So well, here we got the alternator on. Uh, this might be a long enough day or... Time left in the day to see if we can get a PTO shaft on the front here, but we'll see. Okay, we finished out today with mounting the PTO, uh, the PTO shaft onto the U joints or the joints or the yokes. That's what we'll call them, the yokes. So that's turning out pretty good. I'm using my Sesame Street blocks here to get about the right height, so I have an idea. So now we have to build a plate to hold the uh, PTO pump or the hydraulic pump right into here. Okay. The rad for the Lynn tractor, or the rad shell, starts here and goes straight up. So we're out and past, which is good. And so Rodney got the right fitting in the hydraulic pump. So that's, that's tight in there. So I was able to get the little angle because the hydraulic hose on the pressure side will be going that way to the valve body in the cab. All right, that's looking good. So we can plug away at it here. Let's go check the flag of exercise. Okay, it's still nasty out here. And the flag exercise seems to have tangled himself, which is good, so he's not self-destructing. All right. Oh, got a burp. It was the peanuts. All right, let's go walk the dogs. 
uh, I think we'll have to find the book burb here, dig it out, and then we'll walk the dogs and go pick up the pony and drink some bottled beer. All right, talk to you later.